tables to uh, today it is a uh, devotion that i wanted to share uh, from sam's 18 okay so let's turn our bible to sam's 18 Uh, verse 1, if you read, I said, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Here, David is telling, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. That's the way David is start. What a very nice way to start. So, I'm going to give you a background on Psalms 18. If you look at the Bible, the same Psalms, you read it in 2 Samuel chapter 22 also. You read the same Psalm. And I'm going to go very uh, slow. If you think David uh, was chosen by God to be the king of Israel, okay? And then uh, God led him. And then he became the king after going through a lot of uh, difficulties in his life. He was the king of Israel when he was 30 years old. He ruled Israel for 40 years. Most of the scholars believe Psalms 18 was written uh, during the time when he was young. But then he recollected that when he was old. Because if you read the preface on the top, it says, To the chief musicians, a Psalm of David, servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this song. On the day the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. I want to talk to you about a couple of things. When you hear about deliverance, what comes to our mind? When you talk about deliverance, okay? Deliverance means you have been caught or you have been clutched by something and then Something happens that you come out of that situation. Okay. Now, there are two things that you need deliverance. Okay. You need two things deliverance. The foremost thing that needs deliverance is from your sin. From what should you come out? We should come out of our sin. See, we ourselves can't come out of our sin. Somebody has to pay a price for our sin. If you think for a moment, I'm going to tell you some few Sunday school things for the last, first five minutes so that you know uh, you understand the basics of it. See, what did we lose? We lost the image of God. And who can give the image of God back to us? Only the one who created us, correct? See, with our good deeds, nothing is going to change because you can't meet the standard of God. Therefore, what Jesus, God did is he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into this world. And that's a reality. It's a historical fact. It's a spiritual reality. Everywhere you, know, you call AD or BC or something. I'm not trying to be apologetic, but I'm just thinking. It's a reality that Jesus came into this world. And Jesus delivered us out of our sin. But that reality, listen to me, that reality becomes a fact in our life when we do something. It's like, you know, in the kitchen, a cook cooks something. Correct? It's served to you. The cook made it free for you. He did everything that is required to you. He has given it to you. But your hunger will grow only if you eat it, correct? <laughs> you know, it's a very simple fact. Right? Same way, Jesus died for you as a reality. And he didn't die for Christians. He didn't die for Hindus or Muslims. He loved the world. That's what it says. He loved for humanity. Because everyone in the world is made out of his image. Understand? Most of the time we forget that. My son looks like me. It's so proud for me to look at him because he looks like me. Every dad will say the same thing. Our father in heaven is so proud. When you are restored to his image, you lost his image because of sin. We are living in a fallen world. Now, how, how do you come to him? 
you can never come to him unless he attracts you correct he has attracted you that's why you know jesus is lord and then you know i need a savior you come to him repentance is two steps okay repentance is very two changes that happens in your life one is you accept jesus as the lord and then you know you are a sinner you know that the my 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 sins price has been paid by christ on the cross and i tell lord i'm sorry i come to him and say god i need forgiveness see forgiveness is only the first part of repentance did you hear what i said so one part of repentance is what forgiveness once you are forgiven it happens together you understand it happens together you are asking for forgiveness so that you can live righteous you are getting what i'm saying so there is a commitment to live right a commitment to be like christ so forgiveness plus a decision to do a u turn is repentance are you getting what i'm saying there's no point if you are going to go to the dirty water back <laughs> to come and ask for you your strong desire to live like him is your desperation to ask for him you are getting what i'm saying please don't think you are asking for forgiveness because god will bless you that's <laughs> it's a wrong intention okay now that is one part of deliverance but we need deliverance in this world that's what i'm going to talk about today okay we need deliverance in this world can we say that we need deliverance in this world one is a spiritual deliverance okay we need other deliverances so we need deliverance from healing or sick, sickness we need uh, job situations job to be coming out you know our children to be you know, our children to be walking in right we need deliverance in this world because this world is a fallen world what is it this world is a fallen world when the lord jesus christ said you should overcome the world for i have overcome the world and i am with you listen to me there is victory over sin and victory over situations too did you hear what i said there is victory over sin and then there is victory over situations too so i'm going to focus on victory over situations too okay this was introduction what i said okay victory over situations if you come to sams 18 there is two things that you will learn one david keeps on telling i will what is it i will what is it i will number 2 it says he will do it so there are two things one only what god can do there are things what we need to do what is it there are things what it is so beautiful they would says i will do this he will do this i will do this he will do this i will do this he will do this. the entire psalms is that way you getting what i'm saying the entire psalms is that way i will do he will do it. remember that i don't want you to forget i will do it he will do it you got it cool now from where to where the psalms has gone psalms 18 was four it says the pangs of death surrounded me the flood of ungodliness made me afraid so where is david david is in such a terrible situation he is fearing what death I, I, anyone is fearing death hmm? your situations might be bad what i'm trying to tell is it it's a very hopeless and a difficult situation but there's no hope they would was in that situation they would was in that situation and then he says was 29 for by you i can run against a troop so see from the place of death he is telling i can run against an army i don't have any problem 
verse 50 it says great deliverance he gives to his king so from great fear of death the psalms end by great deliverance can we say that where did it start it started with fear of death such a terrible situation but it ended up with what great deliverance okay now let's study that together okay Just one second, one second, is it? Is it clear for everyone, or is it breaking up for anyone? The voice is breaking up, or is it clear for everyone? It's clear. It's clear. The voice is clear. Clear, ah, huh? okay. Okay. Should be. It's it's at your end only, I guess. Okay. Shall I continue? Okay. Now we are going to go in this order. I will. He does. I will. He does. What is the first? I will. Verse one. I will love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. So one thing that you need to do, you need to love him. You need to trust him. What does I will do? What does I will? I will love the Lord. I will trust him. You got it. How will you not trust the Lord, who makes the sun rise every day, the Lord who controls the earth, the Lord who controls the entire nature? How will I not trust Him? And I will love Him. But when I love Him, what does He do? Verse six. In my distress, I called unto him, and he and I cried out to my God. He heard my voice from the temple. We have a God who hears our prayers. We have a God who hears and sees our pain. Did he hear what I said? What an assurance! What an assurance! My youngest daughter. Uh, she's little scared uh, of rooms which is dark. Every kid is like that when they are small. In the room when the light is down there, he will tell, "Daddy, are you there?" When I say, "Yes, Mama, I'm there," then no fear. Why? Because she knows her daddy is there, and the daddy heard her voice. You heard, understand? we are living in fear because you are not realizing your loving father has heard you there is a power in knowing he has heard you you are getting what i am saying when i say abba father you know what thing i am going through difficulty in my life you know i need a job or you know i i, I need a healing or you know, i need a touch when you know you heard that is strength for you Did he hear what he said? But it all starts with a love relationship. I don't think my neighbor's daughter will be very confident if I'm in the room. She'll get more scared, right? <laughs> Because I'm a stranger. I'm a stranger. But everything changed when it is my daughter, when it is my kid, when it is my wife. You understand? When God is your God. When you accepted him as your personal savior, your just knowledge of that he heard you is your strength. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The knowledge that he heard you, that he is hearing you. David is telling, "I'm I'm good. My friend, I'm good." It doesn't matter. Saul comes after me. It doesn't matter. The entire army comes after me. My God heard me. You know, you should tell like this. You know, how do we end end our prayer? How do we end our prayer? In Jesus' name, I pray. You should also add, "Thank you, Lord, because you heard me." Thank you, Lord. We like to say, "Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer." <laughs> 
<laughs> because we try to manipulate god right? <laughs> we like to lord thank you for giving it to me oh okay, you want to pray but i'm telling you it is more powerful to pray god i'm so thankful because you heard me i don't know what you're going through but your simple confidence god thank you you have heard me god came to moses and said i have seen i have seen i've heard my children's cry can i say so what is want first one i i will love the lord i'm telling you a man can be fulfilled listen to me a man or a woman can be fulfilled by a lot of things eating good food going for a good run or getting a promotion or you know you're being blessed by money so many things all those things can bring some sort of good fulfillment but you know what is the greatest fulfillment to fall in love with the creator of the universe you understand there is no fulfillment there is no joy like that and that can't be explained it can only be experienced you understand i try my best to explain that i'm going to fail but it can't be described peter said i cannot describe by words what it means to fall in love with god you understand you go tell your friend do you know what does it mean to fall in love with my wife <laughs> how does that sound that sounds like right. but it sounds beautiful for you because it is your life path you getting what i'm saying it is beautiful for you because he is your father that's what the bible says you've been given the right to be called children of god you have been given the spirit to call abba father what is repentance i told forgiveness plus a commitment to take a uto okay now second i will verse 3 i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised write it down i want all of you to write down and teach this today somebody okay first one i said i will love the lord i will trust and the result of that is what he has heard me he has heard me verse three it says i will i will you underline that i will you understand i will call upon the lord he is worthy to be praised so that i be saved from my enemies verse 14 the result of that he sent out his arrows and scattered the foes lightning in abundance and he vanquished them god just stepped into your life and just destroyed your enemies he destroyed anything that is attacking you because why because you called upon him you got it so what will you do i will call action is god's timing you understand he will act when you call so you understand there is a promise of god stepping into your life and changing your life in your physical realm you understand healing is a reality miracle is a reality supernatural things are a reality it happens in god's timing in god's ways in god's style but it happens when god's children call upon him what the problem is the way we call us god today is uh, feb 20th uh, god uh, please make sure that you act on feb 20th 22nd 22nd by 8 o'clock you don't act on it god i am in trouble 23rd on us i won't pray i'm not your friend anymore christians acting like kindergarten kids they would still like you know, when god steps in ha god steps in god style <laughs> it's not like man stepping is it he sends out his arrows and scatters the foes lightning in abundance and vanquish <laughs> you see 
God, I do not want you to step into my life in my time, in my way, in what I asked, in my, my, my thoughts. God, you step in, you, in your way. You got it? God is powerful. He's almighty. He knows what to do. He will step in in the most unexpected time. <laughs> but keep calling. That is God's time in my life. At least I have seen that in my life. I will expect this is going to happen. No. It don't happen. In the most unexpected time it happens. And then I'm sure. As the Sam said. Now it looks like I'm dreaming. Now it looks like I'm dreaming. You know why? Because God does not want you to think it is because of your deeds that it happened. God is doing it for your good. You understand? God work in your style. Work in your time. Work in your way. But he is a God of miracle. He is a supernatural God. He is a sovereign God. He is an almighty God. In your prayers, you should tell like that. You are almighty. You are Alpha and Omega. He is all-powerful God. God, me, some, some, you know, you, I don't know. Most of the world, you know, you don't have beggars anymore. We are worse than beggars at times. You know, you it. But somehow, I'm not asking you to command. I'm asking you to tell who your God is. You understand? God, you are so great. Why should I fear or worry when I come to your presence? Why should I get restless? My friend, why should I get restless? Who knows how to keep the earth on the orbit? Why should I fear? Who has decided up to what point the sea should come? Why should I worry who knows how to control the winds of the earth? Why should I fear who knows what is the intensity of the sun? He will do it in his ways. So when you are troubled, what is needed is to understand the greatness of God. When you're in trouble, what you need is not actually <laughs> an answer. But what you need is an understanding of how great your God is. Okay? The third I will. There are so many I will. Okay? I'm not going to cover everything today. Okay? okay, let me tell you one thing. I wrote six I wills, oh, sorry, five I wills and deliverance of God about seven. I don't think I'm going to cover everything, but I'm just going to touch and figure out and find. Okay, Verse 21. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have kept the ways of the Lord. And have not wickedly departed from my God. One, I will love the Lord. I will trust the Lord. Two, I will call upon the Lord. Three, I will walk holy. Simple. I'll keep the word of God. I will obey. I will walk in this path. You understand? I will walk in the way of the Lord. I will walk in the way of the Lord. I'm telling you, the greatest achievement a man or a woman can do is to walk in the standard of God. <laughs> do you know what does it mean? <laughs> To walk in the standard of God. Oh, wow. What a beautiful thing. But don't worry. The one who called you to walk will walk with you when you want to walk. Do you understand what I'm saying? The one who called you to walk with him will walk with you. What? Honestly, how could even David say something? I have kept your ways. Oh man, I wish 
that will be my testimony every day. I will give my life, I'm telling you honestly, to walk in the way of the Lord. I'll give everything off because I know it is so beautiful to walk in this way. You understand? To walk in this way. Because you become a different person. Your friends can see it. Your family can see it. A man of God, you know, can be sensed. The love of God in you can be sensed. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know. Back in my nature, it says that dogs can smell fear. Huh? You, you've heard about that, right? But I'm telling you, people can see the Christ in you if you walk in his way. They can see. There's something special about it. Nothing about us. It is about the one who lives in us. It is nothing about us. It is about the one who lives in us. These days, my friends, when you talk to people, God should speak to other people. When you touch people, when you, when you just speak the words, there should be healings flowing, spiritual healings, physical healings happening when you open your mouth. But for that, you cannot pour out what is not inside. Did you hear what I said? You cannot pour out what is inside. You can only pour out what is inside. Walk holy. God will fill your inside with the Holy Spirit. These days, we should come back to that Sunday school song. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little mouth, what you speak. Be very careful. As a result of that, what will he do? I told you, right? What will he do? Verse 17. Verse 16, 17. It's all beautiful. He, 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 he. David says all he, 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 he. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for those who were too strong for me. Verse 19 is so beautiful. He brought me out into a broad place and he delivered me from because he delighted in me. When you walk in the law, with the, in the way of the Lord, God delights in you and God delivers you out of all trouble. It is a reality. Understand? I just want to tell you. I have preached to you. I have taught you many times. Suffering is a reality. Correct? And God can do great things through suffering. I truly believe in that. But deliverance is also a reality. You are not called to suffer forever. In God's timing, He will deliver you. He will pros prosper. Everything is a reality. But the problem is that we start from there. It's like going to college. I go to my principal and say, hey, uh, I love to study in this college. I love to study in this college. Please give me graduate session certificate, then I'll go to first year. Any college will allow? Any country? Graduation certificate is a result of you studying correctly and writing the exam correctly, doing everything according to the law, rule and everything. And this is the reward. You got it? Deliverance is a reward of God for those who are walking in a delightful way. You see that? But you are not walking. See, there are some students, entire engineering and sorry, entire studies will be miserable for them because their focus is only one thing. Somehow pass. So their whole study life is miserable. Their focus is only price, not the path. You understand what I'm saying? When you love the path, price is a result of the path and you will enjoy the path. You're getting what I'm saying? When you love Jesus, you will even enjoy difficulty in your life because he's walking with you. You got it? But your intention is only to go to heaven. Every small problem, God, why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to me, Lord? 
for me to pray is so useless. Do not come to the Lord for the benefits what God gives you. Come to the Lord because he loves you. You understand? So deliverance is a promise. So I said he hears you. He fights for you. He delivers you. What are the three things I said? He hears you. He fights for you. His own ways. He delivers you. Three things about we I told. You need to love and trust the Lord. You need to pray. Call upon him. You need to keep his commandments. What should he do? You should keep his commandments. Let me quickly tell a few more things. <laughs> Chapter 18, verse 37. There are so many things I'm just telling. Just few things here and more. Chapter 18, verse 37. David is saying, I pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were destroyed. We are not given a spirit of timidity. We are supposed to enter into spiritual battle. Did you hear what I said? I will pursue my enemies. Our enemies are not flesh and blood. We know that, right? We have learned that enough and more, correct? Bible has told that many, many times. It is not people. So if you're angry and bitter at people, you've already fallen, okay? Jesus himself taught us to pray, Lord, forgive my sins as I forgive other people. So it is so important to love other people. Our enemy is Satan. We have to get into a spiritual battle. You should know what spiritual battle is. You understand what I'm saying? You need to know what spiritual battle is. You should know when things happen in your personal life, in your life, and Satan is attacking. You should know how to get into spiritual battle. Did you hear what I said? Spiritual battle. You should know what spiritual battle is. Did you hear what I said? How to pray. How to fight Satan. How to pray against demonic forces. You need to know. You need to engage in that spiritual battle. Because you have been given authority to pray. Getting what I'm saying? You should know that. Do not be a uh, uh, touch me not. You know that Totavadi, uh, you know. Uh, the touch me not plant, you touch immediately to shrink. Some people's Christian life is as strong as the fever of your child. Today she has, or the, the child has 104 fever. Your Christian life is in trains, gone. A fever is all what Satan is looking at. You go, I know, tell where you go. Tomorrow your boss says, hey, I'm not happy with what you're working. No, no, no. You should know. Even if, you heard what David said? Even if an army comes against you, verse 29, but by you I can run against a troop. My God, I can leap over a wall. You should know that. You understand? You should know how to perceive. God, Lord, I pray that every spirit of darkness that is working against my home, my family, Lord, I pray that I will take victory over it. God, you work on it. Against my home, my family, protect by the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12 verse 11, it says, we overcome Satan by what? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Your words become powerful when your personal life is a testimony. Did you hear what I said? When your life is a life of testimony, your words have power. I'm telling you, demons will tremble even before you open your mouth. In your mere presence, you should know what spiritual battle is. You got it? They would say, so I think I said four things. What are the four things? One, love the Lord. Fall in love with the Lord. Number two, I said, 
prayer you should have you should call upon the name of the lord prayer should be a lifestyle what is it prayer should be a lifestyle but three i said keeping the commandments of the law engage in spiritual battle okay so probably one of these days uh, we will learn on how to engage in spiritual battle from the lord i said he will hear you he will fight for you he deliver you and i said he brings you to a place which is his inheritance and one more was i want to read the fourth thing was 33 it says he makes my feet like the feet look at that he makes my feet like the feet of a deer sets me on high places he teaches my hand to make war so that my arms can bend the bow of bronze god will transform you to be such a strong person you getting what i'm saying when you engage in spiritual battle god will transform you to be like an army man you got it we need strong men we need strong women you remember i was talking about david's mighty men we need strong men we don't want kindergarten cry babies we need strong men even if an army comes against me i'll stand some of your christianity will go into drains if your wife tells loudly saying that what are you doing go wash the plates of god yeah christianity will go to trash lord why didn't you give me such a submissive wife why what what lord what did i do change her you know change her she is a whole problem just telling one example satan looks at you and laughs you jam i know how long you are but satan said i know jesus i know paul i know jesus i know paul <laughs> satan should be trembling in your locality because there is a man of god and that's you who's living in that locality lord will make your feet like the feet of the deer he sets me on high places he teaches my hand to make war you understand war be a strong man of god god will transform you to be one god will transform you to be one i'm in work in progress god work on me i don't want to have anything in my life that's a hindrance for me to be a man of battle the world is fallen god wants you to win so many battles one more thing the fifth thing so i am going to i said i'm going to just restrict you to five i will and five he will okay what is it five i will and first five he will okay now another i will okay verse 40 therefore i will give thanks to you o lord among the gentiles sing praises to your name thanksgiving lifestyle is so powerful that satan cannot stand up tell it but i'm so thankful to you a grateful christian a joyful christian i told one thing that is so difficult to see among god's people is what do you hear what it is i always tell internal holiness and external smile both is very difficult to see internal holiness that in you i can't see that only god can see that but we don't talk about it our external joy of the lord smile smile be very careful be thankful i will i will i will give thanks to the lord i will give thanks to the lord among the gentiles sing praises to your name what will he do verse 48 he delivers me from my enemies he also lifts me among those who rise up against me 
you have delivered me from the violent man who oh, you know who's a violent man Saul David is talking about Saul that man has been chasing David to kill David he says god delivered me remember he will deliver you out of your greatest misery and trouble your greatest misery and trouble let it be Saul let it be anybody god is in the business of deliverance but how many of you will be thankful that god allowed david to be chased by so i am thankful otherwise we wouldn't have got any of these apps <laughs> we would have got any of these apps we would have heard seen any of these stories i wouldn't know what to do when real great trouble come i don't know how to sing when trouble is there david is the only man in the bible who taught us to sing in trouble we like to complain and murmur and complete 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 he is in the business so i said five i will and five he will can we say that again we have 10 minutes okay let's do it five i will and five he will what is a true deliverance and this message is not for a general public okay this is for god's people the greatest deliverance what we need is from our sinful life you understand that's a starting point that's my admission ticket i sinned i cannot meet god's standard i have sinned i cannot meet god's standard because somebody has to pay the price for it. you got it somebody has to pay the price for it god is sovereign god is love god is just you understand god is just your good deeds listen is not going to pay the price for your sin correct we will have great difficulty in that case you understand god is looking for a price for our sin that was paid by jesus on the cross he died for you he was crushed for you god's wrath on unrighteousness was poured on jesus on the cross now the meal is ready but for your hunger to go you need to eat that and that is repentance repentance has two strong aspects forgiveness of sin and strong decision to take a u turn what is forgiveness to know that i am a sinner the consciousness of sin the shamefulness of sin the brokenness of sin the solution of sin is jesus alone and come to him and say lord forgive me forgive me i don't want to be a mess anymore i want to live right i want to be like you i want to look like him i want to walk in his ways i want to walk with him it doesn't matter where and this psalm is for them five ivels five he will let's go one by one please write down and teach your children teach everybody first i will i will love the lord i will trust him the greatest beautiful thing that you can do is to fall in love with the creator of the universe to trust him who controls the nature right what will he do he hears our prayers can you say that he hears my prayer he sees my trouble he knows what i'm going through he knows the deepest longing of my heart david in psalms 139 he said even before a word was in my mouth even before i could think lord you 
knew it all. Your greatest confidence is that God sees, God hears. Did you hear? Your greatest confidence is what? God hears, God sees. To Moses, God said, I am seen. I am hearing. Second, I will. I will call upon you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are so great. You are so mighty. You are so awesome. You got it? It is like... <laughs> I think, you know, let's say, you know, you need, uh, let's say, urgently one dharam. I think most of you are in Middle East, right? Let's say you need one dharam. And you meet a person who has billions of dharams. Please tell me how will you ask one dharam to you? There is a sense of awe, right, in asking. Do you agree? You don't even know how to ask him. Because you know that Vandarama means nothing to him, but just to know that this man possesses this much and that my need is nothing compared to this. And then you know that this man knows that I need Vandarama and he loves me. Do you even think an ask is required? <laughs> ask itself is not required. When you know your God's might when you know your relation with him, your style of asking Jesus, oh, he is so mighty and he knows it. Did you hear what I said? He is so mighty and he knows it. Okay? Sometimes the way we ask, it looks like it is easier for God to control the universe than to control your emotions. Oh, your problems are bigger than the entire universe. It's lack of understanding of God, okay? And God fights, I said. What will he do when you pray? God fights for you. He fights for you. Simple. He fights for you. He is your dad. He's at your side. But not at your time, <laughs> not at your command, not in your way. He has his own way, he has his own time, he has his own style, which is much better than us. Number three, I will keep his ways. So let's say that together. I will love him. Now he will hear. Okay, what is it? I will love him, he will hear. I will call, he will fight. Please write it down. I will love him, he hears. I will call, he fights. I will keep his commandments, he delivers. I will be doing spiritual battle, he will transform. I will give thanks. He delivers me out of every pain. That's Psalm 18 for you. You got it? That is Psalm 18. Miracle is a reality. Have you seen any sandwich with one side bread alone? Yeah, probably at your home might be there. I don't know. But that is many people's Christian life. There is an I will and a he will together in the sandwich. Okay? Remember, that makes it whole. We don't like, I'll tell you one story. Okay? Recently I heard uh, <clears throat> in a Sunday school, listen to me. They were talking about uh, Lazarus and the poor man. You remember that story? The, Jesus said a story. So they said the story. Okay what happens to all the suffering of the poor man, all the riches of Lazarus ending in heaven 
after death lazarus enjoying everything and the rich man is what going through all pain so they asked the sunday school kids after the story kids you want to be lazarus or the rich man everybody answered and one child replied saying that when i'm living i want to live like a rich man after dying i want to be like lazarus huh now you all would have smiled and this is the way we live right here i want to live like rich man after dying i want to be like lazarus there's no i will it's only he will he will he will he will there is a balance teach the i will teach the he will both has to be there there is a balance in christian life i will he will i will is the commitment he will is the assurance understand i will is a surrender he will is a hope understand both are required both are beautiful okay so i pray this week will be a week of blessing for you this week will be a week of deliverance for you this week will be a week of answers for you understand this week god will be mighty sovereign in your life god bless you